What's up? My name is Casey Budge, and this is Western Sounds. And today I have an awesome guest. I have Henry Pepin on. He uh, is an up and coming musician. He is awesome and uh he put out a really cool funny album in 2022 and uh it is awesome i highly encourage you to go uh look it up um it's called hokum and heartbreak heartache sorry uh and he has been kind enough to come on with me today how's it going going great casey how are you oh i'm awesome so why don't you start off by telling me a little bit about yourself and what got you into playing music? Oh, I got into playing music um, because I wanted to sing. I had sang since I was a kid. And uh, my voice may not reflect that, but I've enjoyed it for decades and picked up a guitar so I could have something to sing to and sing with. And um that carried me for about five years. So if like from 14 to say 19, I just played guitar and sang and really enjoyed it. And then around 1920, I really started taking songwriting a little more seriously, not like a, I want to do this for a living, but um, just, hey, I can write songs too. And I enjoy the songs I write. So I'm going to keep doing it. I like singing my songs more than these others. So that's kind of where it started and, I've been doing it for 13 years since then. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Uh, you grew up in Georgia, is that right? Correct, yeah. I grew up in South Georgia right. with brief stints in Nebraska and North Carolina and Florida. So, okay. yeah. Cool, man. Wide then, variety of geographic homes. Nice. And then you're in Victor right now, right? And I'm in Victor, Idaho right now, correct. That's awesome, man. As we speak. Yeah, I am from Jackson, so just just over the hill right there. Uh, what brought you up north? Um, I think, well, up north and west, um, where I'm from in Georgia, maybe it's just the East Coast, I'm not sure, but very saturated with, with awesome musicians. Like, if you're a musician down there, nobody seems to just know four chords. It's like everybody down there can play the blues. Everybody's really talented. Um but the market is is interesting. It, it, it's a it's a heavily blues, um, not new blues. They want classic blues, classic rock, and pop country. Um, very much think of wedding bands. Like they want that. Pretty much any gig you're hired for, they want wedding bands. There's very few outlets for singer songwriters. Um, a lot, not a lot of desire for it either. Um, I don't know what that's about. There's a lot of people down there who will seek it out on Spotify and other sources um, like your podcast or other playlists and enjoy it and tell you about it, but they're not going to pay to go see it at a local bar. Um, so I came out West and Northwest to try to find an audience really. Um, and I did. And it's, it's really been great. It was a huge gamble. Um, but out here, man, it is, it may be because it's so expensive for musicians to live out <laughs> not many of them and they're, they're, everybody's very uh, dry for music. So, yeah, in Jackson, I found a few places to play, uh, the Virginian, the Wart. Um, and then recently was approached by Jackson Hole Mountain Resort to play some music there. And then I have a regular gig at the Teton Springs Grill here at the um, in Victor. So that's been good. And uh, – everybody's all about originals right they just want to hear what you've got to say what you've got to write and uh it works out really nicely so yeah that's why i came out for the, for these people and i found them so it's been great that's awesome man let's talk a little bit about some of your original music uh for, first question that i have for you is do you have a girlfriend or significant other and if you do how mad is she every time you sing casey I don't. I don't. In fact, <laughs> I haven't had a significant other since I wrote Casey. Now you make me wonder if those are correlated. <laughs> um, no, I uh, I don't. Um, let's see. I have some females that I have sang it to, and they seem to like it because Casey Musgraves has a wide appeal, but uh, a lot of a lot of females 
the female audience really appreciates what Casey has to say and write about. And so they really appreciate a guy writing a song about her, I think, even though, I don't know, she's kind of migrated. Maybe you could say she's migrated from country to, to pop. I'm not sure what she declares herself now, but um in that song i very much hold her up on a country pedestal so yeah yeah uh well anyone who smokes weed with willie nelson is all right in my book um i don't care if she's migrated over to pop or not i have i listened to a podcast uh called one with willie have you ever heard of it at all no i need to check it out it's uh it's about this um this guy interviews a bunch of different people and artists and everything about that. And they talk about one specific uh, Willie Nelson song that they love or have a connection to or anything like that. And uh, Casey recorded um, kind of a deep cut Willie Nelson song on one of her albums. Uh, Let me see if I can find the name of it, but she talks about filming the music video for it. And, uh she got to film it with Willie and everything like that and um let's see it's I think it's on a golden hour one maybe no you got my wheels turning I can't remember maybe I didn't know it was a deep cut Willie song she covered uh are you sure is a deep cut Willie song oh so it's on pageant material I didn't. You just educated me. I did not know that. I like I, that song. I didn't know that either. And uh, so I heard it, her talk about that on the episode, and she was talking about the first time when she met Willie on a tour bus one time after a gig when she was opening for him, and uh, they were all sitting around, and she was talking about uh, all the artists who were playing her in his band, and she was just sitting over there in the corner, like shaking because she was so nervous. And Willie comes up and he hands her a joint. <laughs> That's and, good enough to calm anyone down, right? Yeah, exactly. Take the edge off, hanging out yeah. with a superstar. Exactly. No, she's she's awesome, but your song is awesome too. I I dig the sound of it. I dig the lyrics of it. It it really like gets me going every time I listen to it. It's a fun song. Thanks, man. Yeah. I, I'm glad you like it. It's funny how many people like that's not the most popular uh, um, popularly streamed song on the Spotify, but everybody who's listened to the album loves that one the most. Yeah. um so i don't know what's going on there but yeah i think it might be might be my favorite too i don't know we'll see well i'm, I'm yeah it might so, be my here. fair enough what's what's the most popular song that you've had so far the most popular song is definitely my ticket it is by far just because it's funny right yeah i think uh there's an art to writing the funny song and there's a very soft spot in everyone's heart for a funny song, one that actually makes you laugh. And, uh, and so that one just seems to hit every time I play it live, everybody wants to hear that one again. You know, people who've listened to my album always request it. People love Casey, but they, they request my ticket mainly because they want to hear somebody sing it in a live setting. I think you're singing about girl and mushrooms. It's going to lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. So, so so is that based on a true story or what? I mean, allegedly, is that based on a true story or what? It is based on a, uh, let's see, like a few different stories that kind of coalesced into that. I had a roommate in college who bought a mushroom growing kit off of <laughs> somewhere. I don't know where he got it, somewhere <laughs> on the And, uh, Let's see. He got the mushroom kit, and then I think he did it all right and left it in a kitchen cabinet. He was also into brewing beer, and he bought one of these Mr. Beer kits. And so I put this, like, mushroom growing kit up in the top of this cabinet, and he put the beer fermenting kit up in the top of the cabinet. And this was in, like, April. And he totally forgot about it. (laughs) And we went off for summer, and we'd rented this house for a year lease, and we came back in August – and we had, this was so far out of our minds. Like we hadn't thought about it in two months, three months. And we're sitting in the living room one day and we hear this explosion in the kitchen <laughs> and the fermentation tank had just built up enough pressure where it had blown the door off the cabinet and it covered the kitchen with beer. And this mushroom kit was hanging out up there just 
I mean, it had grown mushrooms at some point, I think, but they had turned it turned into a science project. Up <laughs> and um, and the dog part is from a guy who was a regular at a bar I played I played down in Florida, Beach Bar, and um, he had this bulldog, and he told me the bulldog had a higher tolerance than anybody at the bar on any substance because of just how many things it had gotten into in his house and how much. <laughs> how many different uh, contrabands he had in his kitchen that this thing would get into. And so it had eaten like, I don't know, a quarter pound of mushrooms or something and like ounce of weed, you know, over courses of its life. And yeah. And so that, that kind of popped into my head as I was writing the song. I was like, oh, okay, so the guy's growing mushrooms and then his dog eats them and then <laughs> all hell breaks loose. And oh, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how the, the song came together. Um, yeah. It was a. Uh, I wrote that song driving from Georgia to Port Angeles, Washington State, and uh, somewhere around Nebraska. I think your mind tends to go blank in Nebraska as you're driving <laughs> across country. And yeah, that one kind of came to me, and I just I wrote it behind the wheel of a car. In fact, I wrote that whole album in my head without a pen and paper between georgia and washington actually between georgia and bend i think i went to washington and hooked back to bend and i had it all in my head and realized that, okay i probably should write this down so i had 14 songs written wrote down 10 of them and those 10 made it on the album it's awesome man do you come up with uh all the music all the lyrics at once or do you kind of do the lyrics come to you and then you kind of have to go back and fine-tune the music later or what how do you do that aspect of it um so i was thinking about this today because everybody tends to ask what your songwriting process is um and mine it changes every time but what i like to do is have something that's shiny something that's that shimmers that i, I like maybe it's a lyric maybe it's a melody maybe it's just a chord progression or a strumming pattern but i've got something and if you look at it from the mindset of, okay, this something is going to be in the song for sure. Like 100% I'm putting this thing, whatever I've got in the song. So it's kind of like having a corner of a house or a piece of a car. And you're like, this is going to be a part of the car. This is going to be a part of the house. So it's there. Like we got to work off of it. And so that kind of works as the seed for the song. Um, and then I go off of that and it, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't sometimes it turns into a great song sometimes it just kind of fizzles out but through the process of adding on to whatever i started with to create something beautiful i get better at creating something beautiful it's more the practice of songwriting than actually the song that i'm trying to write like you go through that that process you're sharpening your skills um, a and then B, you're building material. So while that song may fizzle out, a few of the bricks in that house that you built, they're going to stay in your mind. They're going to, the good stuff sticks with you. And maybe another song you try to write that that wheel fits on this car. You know, the one you tried to build earlier that didn't quite work. It looks really good on this car. So like we're going to stick it over here. Um, or this paint color works really good on this house you're trying to build. You know that kind of thing. And uh, that's my process. It's literally starting from absolute nothing each time, except for one one thing. And it might even be an idea. But if it's just if it's an idea, <clears throat> generally that's gonna I'm gonna use that idea to come up with a line, and then we'll work off the line. But most of the time, it ends up being something phonic, like uh, a chord progression strumming pattern, um, and let's say half the time and then a melody comes out of that and uh sometimes an idea will come out of that too it's like what does this feel like what does this groove i've got going feel like and then try to develop an idea off of that what's really fun is having lyrics and then trying to fit a melody to them because that's to me the magic that's really um the wedding between the marriage between a, a lyric and a melody is such a beautiful skill that I, I'm not claiming I have, but um, I know when it when it works, when to keep it, and when to throw it away, and uh, that to me is just the coolest thing. 
Um, so yeah, when it all it, works um, out, it's awesome. Yeah. Do you, are you a songwriter as well? I probably should have asked this earlier. I, I, I do a little bit. I am still refining my process a little bit. I, I do write a few songs and stuff. Uh, I don't claim to be very good or uh, very accomplished at it, but I, I do write a few songs and I'm working on it right now. Cool. So what do you usually start with? Are you a melody first or? Uh, no, I, I normally, normally like uh, an entire poem will just pop into my head. Um, almost fully formed like i'll have the idea for a story or something like that and then uh i'll go through and kind of write it down make it rhyme make it sound good a little bit and then i'll go back through and i'm not very musically talented so i have my incredibly musically talented girlfriend help me make it sound good as well and i go from there <laughs> that's awesome yeah that's uh i tend to write write songs because a girl broke out with me you're you're finding finding help from one that's awesome yeah. <laughs> that's a way better way to go <laughs> i don't know about that but it's much better on the mental health i've done it the other way too and it's not very fun <laughs> no, no it's not but it is good for country music inspiration it is i think it's good for music inspiration in general man yeah, um, yeah. it uh <laughs> i've got a song i've thought about singing it for this podcast because uh that'd be good you had mentioned singing a couple of songs and i was going to do one from the old album and then one from currently recording an album here in victor um and i've got the first track down and that track funny enough is uh somewhat of a breakup song but it has to do with that period of kind of loneliness when you're you know in the songwriting mood if you will or the emotion expressing mood um so yeah well well, heck let's hear it yeah, I'm gonna play it now. Shoot, one on. I just learned harmonica about uh, two weeks ago. I say learn very lightly. <laughs> I, I've kind of, I'm still learning, but y'all are gonna be forced to listen to my where I'm at with it so far. Um, but the song was one of the. 14 songs I wrote on that road trip that didn't make the cut on the first album. And I'm going to include it on the second one because it's just by weird happenstance, the producer I'm using here in Victor had an artist friend of his in town named Margo Valiente. She's from Jackson. You may know her. She lives in Brooklyn now. Fantastic, Um, fantastic artist, incredible vocalist. And he said she'd be willing to, to sing on it do harmony and i said well hell i'll just rewrite it for a duet you're not going to hear the duet version right now but it's going to be on the next album and it's um it's great but the song is called what if kind of day so i'll give it a shot here right What if life's a game just to see who can last the longest in the rain? What if life's a joke? What if we climb to heaven and those gates are rusted closed? Uh Uh-oh. What if this is it? What if she's the one damn shot I if what if I could change? Maybe she'd have stayed. What a what if kind of day. What if she was right? What if I just run from my inner child? What if I was wrong? What if all the blame I put on her was mine all along? Uh-oh. What if this is it? 
What if she's the one damn shot I'd give? What if I could take back all of my mistakes? What a what if kind of day. We say bye. Tell ourselves we'll be fine. Then that sun gets low. We start to feel so alone. If I could change, maybe she'd stay. What if I could say all the words I didn't say? What if I could take back all my mistakes? What a what if kind of day. What if I could change? Maybe she'd have stay. What a what if kind of day. Anyway, that that's it. That was sweet, man. I Thank uh, you. I couldn't quite hear your harmonica in there, unfortunately, but that's all right. <laughs> that's probably for the best, honestly. We're still very much <laughs> in training phase. Um, that might get me safe from being sued anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's all good. Yeah. I'm gonna come over here to get a glass of tea that I made earlier and forgot to bring over to the desk. Oh man, that One is second. the worst. I've I've yeah. definitely done that before. Cool, man. Um, so that's that one. I uh, that'll probably be the first track on the next album, which we are still in the process of titling. I'm not sure what we're gonna call it yet. Well, that's a sweet, that's a sweet song, dude. I'm lucky to hear it early, and I'm sure everyone else will appreciate it too. Cool. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about some of your other songs? Any story? Any super cool stories from any of your other songs? Um, maybe the mailman. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? So yeah, my dad introduced me. It's funny you brought up Casey Muskers. I'll tell a quick, like, quick Caseyism I heard. Uh, so were you familiar with the song "Illegal Smile" by? Yes. All right. So uh, in a few interviews with John Prine, he mentioned that the, the song is actually not about smoking marijuana or it's not about drugs at all. It's about him constantly being in his head and entertaining himself in his own head. And he always felt that it was illegal or something like that. And so he called the song Illegal Smile. But he, in fact, wasn't like a big weed toker. Like he he was kind of a. He smoked a shit ton of cigarettes, I think. I'm not entirely sure he drank that much either. Um, so Casey Musgraves wrote a song called, I think it was called Burn One with John Prime. And she recorded it and then tried to smoke a joint with him at this concert they were playing together. And he was like, no, like, I don't <laughs> even smoke weed. I can't, even, I can't smoke a joint and then go on the stage. And she was like, hurry. Well, anyway, I wrote this song about smoking weed with you and like, gave him the CD. Um so that was kind of funny to me. I was like, uh, you know, everybody pictures John Prine of kind of being this not hippie, but somewhat of a yeah. potter. He's really pretty. I think he was a pretty straight guy. <laughs> but um, anyway, the my dad introduced me to John Prine when I was young. John Prine and Jim Croce, and uh, I found out later after doing some John Prine research that he was a mailman um, prior to being a songwriter. He was a veteran of the Vietnam War, though he spent his time in Germany and never saw the battlefield, came back and stuck with the feds. He became a mailman and picked up guitar again and was writing songs to pass the time driving a mail truck and was totally happy, like happy with life. Totally. Everything's good. Like, everything's fine. I'm going to pick these songs at an open mic occasionally in Chicago or wherever he was. I think it was Chicago. And I want to say it was like Roger Ebert or somebody, some big critic came to the open mic, saw him perform, wrote an article on him. The next thing you know, John Prine's John Prine. So he went from having a happy life to having an even happier life. And then just kind of didn't, didn't happen for him, like it happened to a lot of other people, but I always think about John Prine 
delivering the mail and delivering the news uh, professionally. And then he literally delivering the news and delivering messages to people um, professionally as a songwriter for the rest of his life was an interesting transition. And just the fact that he was a mailman, I thought it would be cool to write a, a song from the point of view of a kid being introduced to John Prine um, as a mailman, but a, in a metaphorical way, if you will. So that's kind of how that song came about. Um, and I wrote it shortly after he died. And uh, yeah, it was a super emotional song for me because he was a huge influence on me from a from a songwriting and just a, an emotional outlet um, showing how you can put words together to paint a picture, to paint an emotion and to get that out, something that you feel and putting it into the into the physical world of form, as you'd call it. So, yeah, it was kind of a an homage to him and a thank you to John Prine for doing what he did. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Hey, um, I'm going to have to stop this meeting quick and send you a link to another one just because I don't have the pro version of uh, Zoom. So I'll just totally send fine. you another. Totally All fine. right. I will end this one and send you another one real quick. Sounds good.